Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, I've got to be honest, I'm getting excited, <laughs> I'm getting nervous, because we are, what is it, oh my god, it's exactly 48 hours left before the Euro 2024 final, 48 hours to go, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this is going to be wild, preview for that game is dropping tomorrow, it might be one of the biggest previews I ever do in my life. So don't miss it. Be here. <laughs> and, and like I've already mentioned, second channel, my personal channel, link in the description, Match Day Vlog will be dropping on there. You'll catch all of my reaction from that final and the day. I'm going to show you some other things as well. So make sure you're there because win or lose, you're getting one hell of a match vlog from me. So, or match day vlog. So make sure you guys are there. Much appreciated. Let's get cracking. Loads has happened. Chelsea and away. So let's start off with Chelsea. We have a new announcement. A player has arrived. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Blues, Renato Vega. He has officially signed for the club. There he is in all his glory. Welcome to Chelsea, mate. Renato Vega has joined Chelsea for 40 million euros on a a 20-year contract? No, I've just I've just realized they've made a mistake. <laughs> they've made a mistake. That is Oh, okay, 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 okay. There's more. There's more. There's more. I, I didn't see the fine print at the bottom. There's more. So that that's the tweet. And then before we get community noted, that was a joke. It's a contract <laughs> until 2032. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. You've got great banter, Transfer News Live. Thank you very much for that 20-year contract. He had me there. You had me in the first half. You had me in the first half. So, Renato um, Vega has joined Chelsea. Huge congrats. Welcome to Chelsea. This is the one signing that none of us expected that I look at and think I'm intrigued. Like, normally when you hear young player... Actually, how old is Renato Vega? Um, is he 22 or...? Oh, he's 20. Okay, well, baby. Um, but it, out of all the young players, you know, when we sign young players, it gets frustrating because all we're signing is young kids. Do you know what I mean? But this one, this is one, I have to be honest with you, where I look and go, hmm, I've got, I've got, I've got a good feeling here. Because Portuguese international, under-21 international, looking to break into the, in, in, into the first team, of course, senior football. Um, but... Is, is very highly rated, done very well at Basel, is very flexible. And we've, we've brought him in because of that flexibility. He's versatile. He can play, he can play as a centre-back. He can play left-back. He can play inverted coming into midfield. He's got all of that going on. And that, I think, can help a lot on that left-hand side. Plus, I don't know about you, but do you ever get the vibe when you just look at a player and you just go, yeah. <laughs> just his look, his demeanor, that's the word. His demeanor just tells me he's serious. You know, the first time I saw his face, he looked like a drug lord. <laughs> he looked like someone out of a cartel. I would have mistaken him for Pablo Escobar any day of the week. Um, so that's, look, hopefully he does really well. And he spoke, he spoke and he said something um, very, very interesting. Let's get into his quotes. I'm absolutely buzzing to be here at Chelsea. This is one of the biggest clubs in England, the biggest for me. I'm really excited to get started. He also says, now watch this. Interviewer asks him, did you watch any Chelsea players growing up? He says, Kante. 70% of the world is covered by water, the rest by Kante. I mean, that is enough for me. That's enough for me to know that this guy is going to be... One of the most important players, and he's going very far, this lad. I like him already. <laughs> I like him already. Now, when you look at Vega, I'm going to try and bring up something here because, yeah, I've got it here. Brilliant, brilliant. This is very, very interesting. Watch this. He says, I speak five different languages. English, French, Portuguese, Spanish, and Arabic. That has come from living abroad. I can't stress, right, not just how vital it is for a man of his age to have already lived abroad. That brings so many qualities, right? And um, 
hell, I'm in the process of it now. You learn so much about yourself. You, 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 you take a next step up. I, I truly don't believe a man has defined himself unless he's lived somewhere else. I, 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 I truly don't. You can obviously within the same country to an extent, but when you go abroad and it's a completely different scenario and you're new and you don't know anything, you come out of your shell. You ain't got a choice. So that's one. At his age, to have spoken, to speak five languages, it tells me that he's bright. He's a bright, bright kid. He, he's got a head. He's got a brain in his head. That's for sure, right? Um, there's, there's something very valuable above his shoulders here. So um, it's good signs. It's good signs across the board. I've got a good feeling about him. I'm looking forward to seeing how he's going to play. Um, so welcome to Chelsea, my friend. And hopefully it's going to be a very, very, very good time and a very good deal for that matter. Because we didn't go and get Calafiori. Instead, we went and got him. So there's that. We'll wait and see how it's all going to pan out. Now, the arsenal Calafiori deal apparently is taking a very long time. Let them get on with it. We'll see what happens. Other news at Chelsea. Kepa, what's his situation? Here it is. Kepa reported for pre-season at Cobham. But is training away from the first team. Good decision. Very good decision. Now, if that's a decision that's been taken by Maresca, why? Because, mate, well, I know some people might say, no, I'd take Kepa instead of Sanchez. Yeah, you know what, to an extent. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I understand the logic. I see what you mean. But he's definitely not coming back into the team. So don't get him involved. Simple as that. Yeah, if he's training away from the first team, look, the, the, the key would be to get him a deal elsewhere ASAP. And we might be onto something. Here's the latest. Chelsea goalkeeper Kepa Izabalaga is in talks over a potential move to Saudi Pro League side Al Ittihad. Al Ittihad. Al Ittihad. Habibi. Listen, I, I can't say that I wasn't involved in brokering this deal, you know, because I am on that part of the world now. And, you know, Habibi's right outside the, you know, on my doorstep. So it's very easy for me to go, you know, I, I, Habibi, Habibi. Salam, Habibi. Uh, my friend, take this wonderful goalkeeper. Uh, his name is Kepa. He will cost. He will cost you a very merely cheap, eighty million pounds. Very good deal. Very good bargain. <laughs> and they'll sign off. They'll sign it off. They'll sign it off. Listen, I hope this happens, right? I hope this happens, and fingers crossed it does. Now, there's also another club that might actually be involved in this, and I don't see how it's going to happen. But if it does, then respect. Here it is. Chelsea expect Kepa to leave and know he would like to remain at Real Madrid. I would like that too. But I don't think Real Madrid are going to want to keep him. That's the problem here. Real Madrid might be the ones to go. <laughs> nah, mate. You're gone. Lunin is the guy that they're going to be sticking with as number one. Uh, we'll see what happens. But hopefully we get Kepa off the books. And look, there were players that we had to get off the books. Ziyech. He's gone. Kepa. Hopefully he's gone. Lukaku, he has to go, right? But these are not easy deals to get done because of the circumstances around these players. So let's hope that they get done and we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts. Um, where do you think he'll end up? Let me know down below. Now, Chelsea are interested in someone else apparently, but this is a very interesting one. Check this out. Chelsea are interested in Desiree Dieu. Rens want more than £50 million. Not happening. That's <laughs> not happening. Absolutely not. Um, it is the market to an extent now. £50 million has become the new £25 million. Um, but, ah, uh, nah, not for 50 I'm sorry. Uh, you know, he's not a bad player. He's actually not a bad player. He's a player that I would actually take in, but... I, it's not happening. 50 mil? Nah, man. Renz, come on. Uh, you have to be a bit more understanding than that. Don't be stupid all your lives. <laughs> You're going to have to do something better than that. 50 million is too much. So um, we'll see. Would you take the player, but how much would you pay? Or well, How much would you want Chelsea to pay? Not you pay. You ain't paying a flipping penny. Actually, you are paying a penny, technically. You know, you go and watch preseason games for 58 quid. You are paying for that deal. So, um, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Now, talking about deals. Well, um, something is happening at Chelsea today. Check this out. Chelsea FC has transferred control of its women's team to Bluco. 
the holding company used by Todd Bowley's Clear Lake Consortium, in a move that could help it meet the Premier League's profitability and sustainability rules. In other words, PSR. And that is worded really badly. It's not Todd Bowley's Clear Lake Consortium. Clear Lake doesn't belong to Todd Bowley, and Clear Lake own more of Chelsea than Todd. Who wrote this? <laughs> Who wrote this? Sport business. Is this Bloomberg? No, it's not. It's a global sports intelligence pay app. You do use sports business, but you got it wrong, yeah? It's, it's Todd Bowley and Clear Lake's consortium. You want to word it like that. Um, I don't know how people still haven't understood that at this point. It's ridiculous. But anyway, um, this will help PSR. Don't get me wrong. This will help PSR without question because on Chelsea's books, it's profit. End of story. But the concern here is splitting elements of the club about and what will come in future. Some people will look at this and go, ah, it's fine. You have to bring the possibility into play that the owners are in a position they could very easily just go, if one day they decide to sell up, is sell everything in fragments. Everything bit by bit, no problem. They might sell off like the club in terms of the men's team and all that, but they'll keep up with the women's team and try and get an inflated fee for, fee for that. It might just cause turbulence. It could. They might very well. And look, uh, to, to be fair, we don't know. They might eventually just bring everything back together and then sell the whole lot. They could. They could. But splitting elements of the club about like this, uh, it's, it just doesn't sit well with me. It's just something that just should not have to be done. Do you know what I mean? So we'll see what happens. But yeah, Immediate PSR, it will help. Of course it will. Um, now, maybe they'll send it back as well. Maybe they'll send it back to Chelsea in future. And maybe, again, that's another, that's another thing that's, that, that might be done here. Maybe they sell the women's team back to Chelsea FC and take out more money for themselves and then run off with that and see you later. They could, they could. There, there, there's definitely business loopholes here that they can take advantage of in order to, for them to get more money. And they, they might do that on the back of the football club. They could. That's what doesn't sit well with me. So we'll see. But that's the latest with Chelsea. Let me know your thoughts down below. Elsewhere, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Breaking, Patrice Evra has been sentenced to 12 months in prison with suspended probation for family abandonment in France. The former French team captain owes nearly 1 million euros in unpaid alimony. Unreal. And I don't think it's a suspended sentence either. Is he going to jail? Is Patrice Evra actually going to jail? Like, that's a bit mad, I've got to be honest. That's insane. Oh, no, it is suspended. It's suspended. It's suspended. Okay. It's a suspended 12-month prison sentence. Okay, he's fine. Of course he's not going to jail. Mm. <laughs> but, okay, so this isn't, this isn't really a big deal then. Basically, if he does something again, then, you know, or if he, if he does something to trigger it, he'll be going to jail. So he's got to watch, his, he's got to watch himself now very carefully. Um, but that's that. Patrice Evra, lot of trouble. Pay up is the more of the story here. To wrap up, a very interesting development that I honestly did not think would happen. But here we are. Sancho and Ten Hag argument is over. Eric Ten Hag had a constructive meeting with Jaden Sancho at Carrington, addressing past issues and agreeing to move forward. Jaden has rejoined squad training. He won't travel to Norway for the friendly against Rosenborg on Monday due to his later return to training, but will be available for selection afterwards. And the focus is now on Jaden fully participating in pre-season activities. It's refreshing to see that something like this has actually been resolved. A long feud, right? has been resolved and it's done and it's in the past. That's nice. Um, we don't see that enough, I don't think. But I got to be honest, I didn't think it'd come to this. I thought it was finished. I thought that's it. I thought they would sell him and game over. Um, so Jaden Sancho is back in the fold at Manchester United. Now, how is that going to affect things at Manchester United? I got to be honest, I think Anthony is now cooked. Finito. Sancho walks into the starting eleven at United. Simple. On that right-hand side, that's got Sancho's name written all over it. So, we'll see. But will he struggle? Will he not? 
Will he play as well as he did at Dortmund? Or will he look a little lacklustre like he did at United? Questions remain to be answered. So let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And I will be here tomorrow for a double upload. There will be a double upload. We'll go through all the day's happenings, but you are going to be getting one of the biggest previews the channel has ever seen. Right? We've done Champions League final um, previews. We've done all sorts um, on here. We're going to be doing a Euro 2024 involving England final preview. Amazing. So be here. I'll see you then. Hit the subscribe button, notification bell on. Check out the socials on screen and in the description. And um, don't forget to check out the second channel. Keep your eyes peeled as that match day vlog will be dropping um, possibly Monday, if not Tuesday max, but I reckon Monday. So keep your eyes peeled on that. And I'll see all of you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. See you tomorrow. Take care and peace.